Welcome to the National Church of England online service. My name is Jill Behenna and I am the National Deaf Ministry Advisor. I'm also the chaplain with the deaf community for the Diocese of Bristol. If you're sat there thinking, that face looks familiar, that's because usually I'm down in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, translating into BSL. Today I'm leading the service. Our service today will be a little bit different because all the contributors are using British Sign Language, or BSL. And the majority of those you will see are deaf. We're recording this service at St Barnabas Church in Swindon, where deaf people come regularly to worship. But there are also people involved from Birmingham and Stafford. Our preacher today is Reverend Dr Hannah Lewis. the lead chaplain with deaf people for the Diocese of Oxford. We are here to celebrate Bible Sunday. You are very welcome. With God, nothing will be impossible. For he is our God. And the God of salvation is making all things new. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. When we consider who God is, his love and perfection, 
we realise just how far short we have fallen from how God wants us to live. So let us confess our sins to Almighty God. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love bring you back to himself. Forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we pray. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty. that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As today we celebrate Bible Sunday, we remember that deaf people who use sign language have very little access to the Bible in their own language. Around the world, projects have started to translate the scriptures into various national sign languages. Here in England, the BSL Bible Translation Project has been set up to translate the Bible into British Sign Language. In this next clip, we'll see the team at work in Birmingham. Here they are focusing on translating part of Genesis. Shall we, um, shall we watch it again? Uh, Peter? Peter? Oh, Peter? You asked about Lot, whether he stayed in the same place or moved away from the town? Yeah, so I think we should sign it that, that God thought of Abraham, so ushered Lot away from the town to save him. Later, Lot was worried with his two daughters and the placement of Lot should be away from the town at that point. And then he travels up into the hills and to the cave rather than back here when when actually he needs to be over there. Hello, my name is Dawn and I'm here at the BSL Bible Translation Day. I'm one of the translators. The Bible is important to me and being involved in this work has helped me to get a much better picture of what the Bible means. In 
It's also important for those that will watch the translation that they understand the meaning of the biblical texts, what they're trying to say. That will be very helpful. Hi, my name's Peter. That's my sign name. I'm the project coordinator here in Birmingham as we translate the book of Genesis. I've been involved in the translation project for many years and previously I've studied theology and biblical studies. You never stop learning and it's so interesting. The aim of this project is to provide the deaf community with access to the Bible in their language, BSL. Our reading is taken from Nehemiah, chapter 8. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe, Ezra, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest, Ezra, brought the law before the assembly. both men and women, and all those who could hear with understanding. This was the first day of the seventh month. He read it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday. In the presence of all the men and women and all those who could understand. And the ears of the people were attentive to the book of the law. The scribe Ezra stood on the wooden platform that had been made for the purpose. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen. Amen. Lifting their hands, then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that people understood the reading. And all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. 
Then he said to them, Go your way. Eat the fat and drink sweet wine. And send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went on their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing because they had understood the words that were declared to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is Psalm 119, 9 to 16. How can young people keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart, so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy word, long preserved. of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope in this world where'er we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient
Why is the Bible so important to me? Well, when I look back to when I was young, I remember going to Sunday school, which I loved because the teacher herself had deaf parents, what we call a coder, so could sign. My school was an oral school where no one signed, so I loved watching her signing the Bible stories from the Old Testament. Once that time in my life was over, I felt disconnected from the Bible. Of course, there are plenty of Bibles around, but they're all in English, not in my language, so I didn't fully understand them. So there was a huge disconnect for me for around 22 years. It was at that time that I became a Christian. And then I discovered the New Testament First, through a special Bible for the deaf, there was a cartoon form with speech bubbles. Of course, I can read English, but complex English is hard. When the BSL Bible translation started, I could understand it comfortably because it was in my first language, and I could understand it clearly. That's why it's so important that deaf people get the Bible in their language, just as people around the world have the Bible in their own spoken and written languages. Deaf people too need to be able to access and enjoy the Bible. It's so precious. That's my view. Our reading is Colossians 3 verses 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another and, if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, Clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May my words and signs and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I'd like to invite you to imagine or picture a scene in ancient Jerusalem. Early in the morning, the sun is barely risen. A large open space near recently rebuilt walls and a gate. People are coming in twos and threes, families alone, men and women, all ages, young and old. Some are clearly blind, being guided by others. Maybe others are pushing their way to the front to stare intently at the person speaking, reading their lips. Maybe there's a group over there of people signing to each other. Maybe some arrive limping or have problems walking supported by others. A huge variety of people. The atmosphere is an excited anticipation. And at the front of this crowd is a wooden platform. A man, flanked by others, stands and a large scroll is unrolled. And all the people stand up and a silence descends. This man, his name is Ezra, is recognised as a man of God. He prays, blessed is the Lord, and all the people respond, amen, with their hands lifted. And Ezra reads from the scroll in the ancient language of the Hebrews, And others, in turn, translate and explain in the Aramaic language the people now use. Why don't they understand Ezra's reading? This crowd are recently returned from a long exile in Babylon. They no longer understand the ancient language of their holy scriptures. They have forgotten parts of the story of their people. Their history forgotten, they cannot remember how they should be acting as the people of God. Inspired and enthused by their leader, Nehemiah, they have joined together to travel back to Jerusalem and rebuild it but they only dimly know why. Their identity, their understanding of themselves, of the people of God, has been fogged and confused by their stay in a country, not their own. This coming back together, this proclamation of the law, is an opportunity to be reminded of who they are, where they have come from and why they are here. Today is Bible Sunday, one day every year that the church celebrates the gift of God's word and those who have copied it, translated and interpreted it over the centuries. The reading from Nehemiah reminds us why it's important to us to have access to the word of God in a language we can understand, whether that language is spoken, written or signed. Clear understanding is key. Our identity, our self-understanding as Christians 
is rooted in the text of the Bible. Our understanding of who we are in God, where we have come from, and why we are here is formed as we engage with scripture. As we read, receive, reflect and discuss it. And it's not only the scribes, but also the translators and interpreters that are vital to this formation of our identity as Christians. If we rely on vague memories of Bible stories that we were told as a child, it is hard to grow in our faith. I've been a priest for 25 years, preaching for longer, and every time I sit at my desk to prepare a sermon on a passage, no matter how well known, how many times I've read it and preached on it before, I see new things, new applications, new meanings for my life. If I had relied on memory of the passage and not read it again, I would have missed those insights. The retelling of the law, the explanation and understanding of it, brought great joy to the people of that time in Jerusalem. They went home to party. Let us today give thanks for the word of God given to us. For the original authors and those who have translated and interpreted it since. And let us pray for all working to increase access to the scriptures today. Translators, scholars, preachers. And let us rejoice together that we have this precious gift from God. And so we pray, blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us to hear them. To read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them. That through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of everlasting love, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. On this Bible Sunday, we give thanks for the Holy Scriptures that teach us and inspire us. We pray for those engaged in Bible translation around the world, that God will bless their work and that many will be blessed as they receive God's word in their own language. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We remember our brothers and sisters in Christ in countries without religious freedom. who may not have access to the Bible. We ask God to protect them and give them courage. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We read in the Gospels that Jesus reached out to those who were ill and marginalised. We pray that we may reach out in his name to offer comfort, healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Psalm 119 says, Your word is a lamp to me and a light to my path. We pray for those who live in uncertainty and fear of the future. We pray that God will be their guide and be present with them. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for those who are nearing the end of their earthly life. Be close to them, Lord, and lead them into your eternal light. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The final prayer comes straight from the Bible and is St Paul's prayer for the Ephesians. He writes, I pray that out of his glorious riches he will strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, 
that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The last word for this service belongs to deaf people. During the pandemic, many found great comfort in a song that used words from the Old Testament from the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The deaf community blesses you now with the UK BSL blessing. Manna rained down from heaven. This isn't second guessing. We know that we are protected. May the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message. Grace and favors in your nature, in your essence. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and the children and the children. May his favor be upon you. Thousand generations, just 
Children, may His favor be upon.